What's up guys, Derek, moreplaysmoredays.com. Today we're going to be talking about the ideal surplus to gain muscle without fat. So obviously it's very, very difficult as an advanced, you know, lifter or trainer or whatever to gain like pure lean tissue without any fat whatsoever. It's very, very difficult to do and you'll likely be inhibiting your potential growth if you chase this to begin with. But you can minimize this and this is kind of the ideal, like one of my biggest regrets when I've done like bulks and cuts in the past is doing too aggressive of a surplus and simply pouring on the fat when I just, it was unnecessary. Like you only need a certain surplus to provide enough uh you know recovery to recover from your increased volume or workload or progressive overload in your training sessions and to stimulate muscle growth and then anything above and beyond that you're kind of just spilling over at that point into fat storage so it's like if you can support your recovery with an extra you know 300 calories what happens when you add another 300 calories on top of that above and beyond what your body needs. Well, it goes straight to fat storage. Like there's, it's not gonna do anything useful with it because it's, you know, there, you've already supported recovery with your, you know, hypothetically 3,300 calories or whatever. So where do you start? Basically what I would do is obviously finding your maintenance can be very difficult and, you know, overwhelming. And these calorie counters are like way off. Like typically what I do, the calculator I use is the Mifflin St. Gior formula. And basically like what I would do is punching all you know your activity all your stats and stuff to get a rough you know total daily energy expenditure obviously it's not going to be accurate it could be off by as much as 200 to 300 calories and sometimes more in some cases but at least it gives you a ballpark if you have no idea what you're doing to start at and what you can do is basically what i do is do like a feeler week where you basically follow the calculator recommendation of your maintenance, whatever it thinks your maintenance is, and follow a diet hitting those exact macros or that calorie intake for a week. And then see what happens to your weight and just follow your weight for a week. If it goes up a bit, you know that you're probably actually in a surplus. If it goes down a bit, you know you're probably in a deficit and you should you know, titrate it up a bit to hit your actual maintenance. And then once you know where your maintenance is with a greater level of accuracy, I would just throw another 300 calories on top of that of whatever macronutrients you deprived yourself of during your last cutting phase. And if you've never done a cutting phase before, it's, you know, typically safe to say, you know, increase carbohydrates in like relative to whatever increased demand you have in the gym. So, you know, for me, let's just say hypothetically, I had a maintenance of 3000 calories, obviously, you know, finding your maintenance is a process in itself, like I just said, but once you figure it out, it's actually not that difficult to do. And once you've nailed that down with a fairly reasonable level of accuracy, I would probably throw another 300 calories on top of that of carbohydrates. My, you know, my diet doesn't change significantly from cutting to bulking. All it does is the portions change. And the protein is, you know, pretty much staple throughout. I might increase it a bit during a deficit just for satiety purposes and stuff. And maybe it goes down a bit in the bulk just because of the uh, protein sparing effects of carbohydrates and the fact that I can handle more, more carbs without, you know, overeating because I'm more satiated because I have more calories in my system. So, you know, obviously there's different ways like to skin a cat here. But typically a 300 calorie surplus is a good place to start. And then from there, you can gain lean, not have excessive spillover. And then once you plateau for like a full week in weight gain and you don't, let's just say you're shooting for a pound a week, I think is, you know, a pretty solid target. If you don't gain anything for a full week, then at that point, what would I do personally? Well, if I was natural, your only option at that point is basically increase calories a bit. Or, you know, you can mess with your volume and your, you know, overall workout, you know, split a bit and try and somehow figure out a way to uh, accommodate your calorie intake better. But, you know, typically the most basic thing to do is just increase your macronutrient intake in order to accommodate the increased workload if you're not gaining and your strength is plateaued. But if you're enhanced or if I was enhanced and I was doing like a bulk phase, I would probably look at, well, first of all, it depends if you're gaining good weight still. Use the mirror as your guide. It's not just about gaining, you know, a pound a week and then, you know, you're like doing well. It has to be good weight. Like if you're preferentially, if your body's preferentially gaining fat relative to muscle, then you got to take a step back and look at your diet, like look at your training, see what's going on there. Cause that is not, you know, eventually you're just going to get to a point where you need to reel your calories back cause you're just gaining way too much fat. Like you should be gaining a preferential, you know, at least a solid ratio of muscle to fat and not a significant amount of fat. Like you shouldn't be gaining like 10 pounds of fat for every pound of muscle. That's where you know you're 
your bulk is probably just excessive in terms of an unnecessary amount of calories. So if it were me, once I plateau for a full week, I would then look at adding another 100 calories on top of that. And then I would watch the scale and see what happens. And obviously if I was enhanced and I was doing a bulk, I would also look at my hormones and my weekly dosage. And obviously there's two things I can play with there if I was enhanced. One would be weekly hormone intake and one would be you know daily macronutrient intake. And it's like, there's two variables there. If you're a natural, obviously there's only the macro intake, but it's like, to if your body's plateaued, it's just like if you're in a cutting phase and you plateau, you then would either increase your energy expenditure or restrict more calories. Just do the, if think about it in the opposite scenario, if you're trying to bulk, if you now have a situation where your body's plateaued, what does it, you know, logically, what do you do? You increase the stimulation via whatever, or you increase the macronutrient intake to support increased, uh, muscle accrual, strength, you know, recovery from your training sessions, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's a very basic, you know, outline in terms of how I would approach a bulk phase to minimize fat storage. And if I ever got to a point where my abs started getting so blurry that it was like, you couldn't even see them anymore, I would know it's time to reel things back a bit and drop my calories. Cause that's, and that's a good gauge in my opinion. Like you should never be starting a bulk with no visible abs whatsoever at that point if you are you should be trying to do you know like a recomp because you probably are like a newbie who hasn't gained a significant amount of muscle and needs to build a foundation before you have what i would consider a metabolism sufficient to support a good successful cutting phase to begin with and to uh have the yourself be in a good position for a strong you know bulk phase you know, if you want to call it that, or a muscle accrual phase where you preferentially gain muscle relative to fat. If you try bulking up when you're like 20% or something, in a surplus, it's just not going to work well. Those, If you're in that situation, skinny fat or whatever, you should be eating around maintenance in my opinion, maybe like a very slight surplus and just trying to gain as much muscle as you can, but minimizing the fat. If you're trying, if you're a very, very lean guy, that's where you have more leeway in terms of your calories. So it's just, it's just very basic, you know, if you're too fat, don't eat as much. If you're, you know, you have, you're very lean, eat more, but don't just like keep it within reason and just watch the mirror. Cause the mirror is not going to lie to you. The scale is going to go up by a pound, go down by a pound, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, the mirror is not going to lie to you. If you don't have any abs visible whatsoever, you got to reel things back and try and, you know, get your body composition under control again. If you're way too lean or you're just, you know, in a very good position, body composition wise, you probably have a bit more leeway in terms of ensuring you're always in a surplus and to continue building on that as your metabolic rate adapts. You know, obviously on paper, your metabolic rate is going to say your maintenance is like 3000 on a calculator for the entirety of your bulk. But we all know that through metabolic adaptation, you know, your body's eventually going to plateau on the 3,300 and then you're going to need 3,400 to grow more. And then you're eventually going to need 3,500. You're eventually going to need more and more and more to support continued lean growth. You can't just stay at what the calculator says for the entire thing. You have to go as your metabolism, you know, adapts and upregulates or downregulates based on a surplus or, or a deficit for lean gain with a minimization of fat accrual or fat loss with a minimization of muscle degradation. So that's my stance on the ideal surplus or the ideal way to approach a bulk. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Check me out on Instagram, follow me there, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, podcast link description below. If you guys can drop a comment in the uh, on the video, helps the algorithm, helps you know new people see the video that wouldn't have otherwise. And same with the podcast, if you guys can drop a rating, that helps a lot too in terms of the algorithm there. So much appreciated when you guys do that. Talk to you guys soon.